What's going on, you guys? Happy Easter, everybody. Early morning live stream. We go talk some boxing. Hope everybody can hear me. Hit that like button for your boys. Come on in. Arrow the Truth, Big Fish Spencer Jr. made his return last night at the Tim Zoo, Sebastian Fandora fight. And yeah, what a way to make his grand return, right? What a way to make his return. Looking like a linebacker. All right, we go talk about it. You know, what's next? And what did Fandora have to say about everything, right? Because he's the man that's kind of, you know, holding all the, I guess you could say, leverage. You know what I'm saying? All roads lead to Fandora now. You know, Tim Zoo went in there and got beat and due to the politics of boxing you could just tell in the way um in his voice after the fight that he knew he wasn't gonna get a rematch but yeah salute to everybody in the building man happy easter hit that like button you come on in wait till some more people get up in before we really start cooking on this easter sunday yeah man we gonna see what fundora had to say about the um because it's looking like errol spence is gonna get the fight this is what it's looking like. I'm not saying this is what it is. This is what it's looking like. Errol Spence hopped in the ring. You know, I wish he hopped in the ring when Crawford fought Porter that night. That night, Crawford fought Porter. Instead of him running out of the building, you know, he should have ran towards the ring. But with Sebastian Fandora, he ran right towards that ring. Mm -mm -mm. What's up, D-Town Funk? Cerebral Salute. Ruben Sanchez. Salute. Hit that like button for your boy, man. You lost, sir. You lost. And now we got some more recent news, even from last night. Yeah, we got some updated news as to what's going on with this Spence Crawford Saga Part 3. This is this is the new chapter. I thought it was over. Right? I thought the Spence chapter was finally over, man. But <laughs> it continues, man. It continues. What's up, D. Luckett? I see in the building Reggie Singleton. Salute. PT57. Salute. You said, who do I think is more proven? Boots or Fundora? I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. Fundora just proved it last night. Fundora's the, the more interesting fight, man. They, Fundora's... That's a good question, though. Who's the bigger fight between Boots or Fundora? I think Fundora would be the bigger fight. I think Boots would be a big fight, too. But I think Fundora would be a bigger fight just because it's Fundora. You know what I'm saying? He's a big six foot six dude. That's always going to be somewhat appealing, you know, um, even to the casual audience to see this big dude and then see if these smaller guys could, could, could topple him. You know what I'm saying? That's going to always be a thing. David and Goliath, it's going to always be a thing. But he accomplished more in the sport. They seem to be pushing him more. Um, you know, that's just what it is. With Boots, he's kind of in the, in the backgrounds, you know, um he has he has he headlined a card yet you know um it's a it's a few things you know what i'm saying what's up hey zeus i see you in the venezuela life salute you said it looked like a circus act seeing man i'm telling you bro it'd be the craziest looking thing ever to see bud stop this dude but i'm gonna wait to small people get in the building before we continue what we got to talk about yeah i know we talked about it last night but some new news came out and i kind of just wanted to get it all out hey we go talk about it hey zeus we go talk about it but bud tells errol spence sorry buddy you got waiting lines sir and then errol spence says i don't know champ i don't do lines <laughs> oh man Errol Spence said he don't do lines, bro. So Errol Spence said, I cut in line. I'm the big fish. <laughs> how you go, how you go jump, jump in front of the dude that beats you, bro? And then have a smile on your face. Look at, look at old boy in the background. And how, how you go have a smile on your face while doing it? Because you were supposed to be rematching him. But instead, you know, you just gonna go up to the next weight class and segue right into a Sebastian Fandor fight. Now, Spence feet isn't gonna be held to the fire like most fighters. Most fighters' feet would have been held to the fire for for this type of move. But since it's Errol Spence, um, he seems to be exempt from anything like this, right? He ain't gonna get no backlash. He ain't gonna get people saying, "Oh, well, you, you know." 
you just lost to Crawford. Why you just didn't? Re- none, none of that stuff is going to be a real issue. The next thing is them trying to push for this fight. You say it's not business, it's fear. Salute Anthony Johnson. I see in the building. Marvin Terrell, salute. GK, salute. Hey, you said someone on a video said PBC equals prevent, but Crawford. That's funny, bro. Prevent Bud Crawford. Oh, my God. That's what it's looking like it means, bro. Prevent Bud Crawford. Like, they don't they don't want him to get no more one up off on him. He already cleared out one weight class for him and messed everything up. You know what I'm saying? PPC had all the chips at 147 and 54, and they don't need Bud messing up two weight divisions, and he's not signed with him. Come on, man. Yeah, Spence is exempt from accountability. Oh, excuse me. Spence is exempt from accountability. Yeah, that's right. He is. That's what I said. Nobody's going to say Spence got to do this. Nobody's going to say Spence got to fight Boots. Nobody say he no, he ain't going to do none of that. He will hop right in line. He don't do lines. He hop right in line to try to fight Fundora. But unfortunately for him, um, he may not get that fight. Yeah. Um, for all the people that's really on a high horse about it and, just, you know, cheering and celebrating, like, on some weird shit, he may not get that fight himself. And salute um, to according to boxing, but Pascal Valcasarel, um, the president of the WBO, came out and said this. Great fight in Vegas at Tim Zoo. Show again that he's one of the best 154 pounders. Congrats to Tim and at Sebastian Fundora. Tremendous um, WBO boxing title bout in which Fundora receives judge's decision. Next week, next week, WBO will order negotiations for Fundora versus Terrence Crawford. Yep. Yep. What Bud ordered President Paco Valacarcel said that he's going to order that fight next week. And this is why I say, Bud, keep that WBO belt, bro. WBO loves Bud. And they're going to make it happen next week. Tim's Sebastian Fedora ain't even going to have time to think about being a champion before they go try to make this fight happen. And it's, it's really Bud and WBO versus PPC and the, the machine. That's what it's looking like to me. And then this is what Fandora had to say himself about fighting Terrence Crawford. The WBO orders you to fight, to fight uh, Crawford next or you'll be stripped. Under any circumstances, will you vacate the WBO belt to fight Errol Spence? Whatever they give me. Whatever they give me. Uh, Errol Spence is a great opportunity to uh, 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 match made in heaven. But Terrence Crawford is the best fighter in the world. I would like to fight him. WB. That's what Fundura had to say, man. It's, it's, it's just as humble and as honorable as a Shaolin monk. You know what I'm saying? This dude, this dude's like, I would like to fight him. He's the best in the world. You know what I'm saying? So Errol Spence looked like he might have to take a back seat because Fundora is the champion. Fundora said, I'm not vacating no belt. Fondora said, I would like to fight Terrence Bud Crawford because he's the best. Errol Spence is an intriguing fight. It's a, it's a good fight, but Terrence Crawford is the best fighter, and I want to fight the best. So that's what the Tower of Inferno said. What will happen? Will the PBC have enough pressure, put enough pressure on Fondora for him to vacate that belt and to force a fight with Errol Spence Jr.? Now, if, 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 if a belt vacation was to happen we will already know what it really is we'll know is this is the machine trying to push things into the position of Errol Spence Jr. is Fundora playing ball with PBCs by him not saying what they want to say right like him vacating him not vacating this belt will mean that he will have to deal with Terrence Crawford. This is not what they want. They want Errol Spence to get this fight. Because then if Crawford gets in there and beats Fundora, then Crawford holds all the leverage at 154 pounds, and he destroys their leverage at 154 pounds. Because why? Because Crawford's not part of the team. He's a free agent out here. So it's not like it's an in-house situation. 
And then he's an older fighter that's going to be out the door relatively soon. Yeah. It come, it, it's more than just getting in the ring and putting on gloves and fighting. There's a lot that comes with this shit, bro. And this is really what it is. It's for them to keep the leverage, keep everything in-house. You know what I'm saying? Play hardball with Crawford because Crawford kind of ruined their plans, so to speak. And this is why I told you guys, Crawford is bad for business for them. Because he's a great fighter. He can whoop all they fighters. And then he's a he's a pretty stubborn dude to where he won't really join the team. That he'll try to do business on the outside on a fight by fight basis. So this is not what they wanted, but this is their way to kind of get back at him. But smart for Bud from keeping that WBO belt. Everybody's saying vacate the belts, and do all this shit, vacate the belts. Nah, bro, for what? Vacate the belts. If he had a vacated the belts, listening to knucklehead fans. What leverage will he have to even get any of these fights at 54 pounds? This is a guy that's regarded as the best fighter in box, not just some guy, not just some up-and-coming prospect telling everybody he's the best. He's the guy that's out here proved it over the years. And he's still having a hard time getting fights. Arguably one of the best fights to be made in boxing would be to have Terrence Crawford on that bill. And he's still got to do all this shit to get a fight. Luckily for him, Fandora's Fandora is a is a, is a, is a gangster. Real nice guy. Very likable fighter, Fandora. Just it's hard to dislike the dude. And if he falls through with this, well, he'll be going against PBC as well. And they will they do not want this. They didn't they didn't want this right here. They didn't want him coming out here saying this being an honorable warrior and all nah, nah we want you to follow business. We don't care about none of that warrior honor shit. No. This is business. And you get up in there with Crawford and lose, then we lose all our leverage. So a guy that's not on our team. Salute to everybody in the building, man. Hit that like button for your boy, man. What was what, 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 Errol Spence? You lost, sir. You lost, sir. So how you go cut in line, man? Look at him. Hold up. What do you say? You. What's going on? You said you would like to fight the winner of this fight. Well, here he is. What do you have to say? Oh, I was trying to get it on. He got the big dog now. Let's go. Hey, what's going on? He got the big dog now. You know what I'm saying? He got the big dog. He got the big dog now, man. Yeah, he the big dog, y'all. I thought he was a fish, but I guess he's the dog now. <laughs> this is what this is the games, man. This is the games. What you said? There's another interview after that one said he will fight Spence. So what is he saying? You know what I'm saying? Because if the WBO, like the WBO said, right here. Say they go order negotiations for next week. Then what is he gonna do? Is he gonna vacate that belt? I don't think that'd be the smart move. Because then it'll be a duck move. Vacating the belt is, is, is ducking. Riddick Bowen. You know what I'm saying? You Riddick Bowen, and it's not gonna be a good look for you, man. Y'all hit that like button for your boy, man. Early morning live stream. Happy Easter, everybody. Earl Spence ain't trying to go through that again, man. That 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 fight with Crawford, bro. He it was real, real, real slick. How they how they I question that eye injury, bro. Remember the Pacquiao fight too? Remember I said yesterday last night? It just seems like this. I'm not saying this is what it is, but it seems like PPC has this thing to where they guys get hurt out of nowhere. And just, you know, shit just, you know, whatever. Like, what, what, what Spence was preparing for uh, Pacquiao. 
the little Pacquiao dude and shit. You know what I'm saying? Messed him up and shit. And then before Crawford, he gets hurt. I mean, it's like these guys are the only ones that be getting hurt before fights all the time. It's really notable with PBC's top guys. That's just what I notice. You hardly hear about any other guys really pulling out of these fights like that, especially boxers. Boxers hardly ever have to really pull out of fights. Now, that's mostly like MMA fighters, martial artists, you know, stuff like that. You said they would make Bud versus Tim Zoo for the vacant WBO title. They could do that if they um if 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 Tim if if Fendora vacates. If Fendora vacates, he would um they would make Crawford and um Zoo for the WBO. Y'all hit that like button for your boy, man. We got like almost a hundred people up in here. Spence Crawford saga continues. Crawford Spence saga continues, man. I thought it was over. But lo and behold, Errol Spence, he makes his grand return, man. Crazy. You said why he waits so long to announce that injury. Yeah, he waited a long time. He should have got that cataract surgery right after the fight. You know what I'm saying? But he waited, 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 stalled out negotiations with the rematch with them. IBF already don't like Bud. It was on his ass. They stripped him, gave the belt to Boots. And now what? Oh, well, guess what? My eye ain't really hurt for real. I'm about to go up 54 and, and, and hop in this fight with Fondora now, especially since Keith is gone. Do I believe Roly is finished? Yeah, man, I think he's done, bro. You know what? You know what the thing is with Roly? One thing, one thing I've got to mention last night, and I didn't like it from PBC. PBC did a horrible job last night, and they don't, they don't always do a bad job. But last night they did a bad job, and it's probably because they just getting things going. It's been a while, right? But one thing they they did that I didn't like that most people probably didn't even notice is that they interviewed Rolly Romero after that fight. Why would you interview him when he's concussed like that? He could Broly didn't even know where he was at. From the last round, he got stopped all the way until he walked to the back. He didn't even know where he was at. And they were over here trying to talk to him. You could look in his face and he didn't even know where he was at. The kid didn't know where he was at. And y'all over here trying to talk to him and shit. And he's over here knocked the fuck out on his feet. So that was a real bad job. Maybe Jordan um, Plant didn't understand any of that stuff, right? But somebody there should have. And they shouldn't even interview Rolando Romero. Maybe this is the last time we're going to see Rolando Romero <clears throat> on his on his on his stage. And really looking at that fight, um, Pitbull just looked like the better fighter, y'all. He looked like the more seasoned, polished, stronger, better fighter. Rolando Romero looked like a guy who just started boxing three or four years ago. Pitbull had his style down pat, iron fucking chin. He probably felt like a little brick when you was trying to hit him. And we know Roley got some punch. Roley got a good punch. Couldn't even move the pit bull, bro. That's what I was most impressed by in that fight is how tough and durable pit bull really is. I mean, he's just keep coming. No matter what you got, no matter who you are, no matter what you bring it, the pit bull is going to be coming. He's not unbeatable, but you got to be able to get that dude's respect. His shoulders looked bigger. You know what I'm saying? Pitbull was just strong, coming forward, just taking his time. Didn't get didn't get um upset like he did his last fight. Remember last fight he got upset when dude was giving a move. This time he was calm. He kept his cool, just kept walking him down, and he got the job done. Pitbull is impressive. For a guy that don't throw no jabs, his punches show do know how to fucking land. He got really good timing too. Pitbull has excellent timing with those crazy looping wild shots. Yeah, sometimes when he misses, he misses big. But he has really good timing to where Roly just couldn't get nothing going. And he dominated him. He was just a, clearly the better fighter all around. Yeah, his back looked as strong. Pitbull looked as strong as fuck, bro. He, like, he looked strong. He, he got a good chin on him. And we saw what Tank couldn't even really move the dude. And Tank, one of the heaviest hitting little guys in boxing. Salute to Lenny Wallace for the super chat. He says, big dog, because Turn pierced his ass up like sushi. Yeah, man. 
You said Pitbull looked like he was on a juice. Man. I don't know, bro. He was just coming. Are we going to find out if he was or not? I just think that's part of Pitbull's game. He's not going to be the defensive guy with the fast feet. He's not. With the head movement, no, he's not. So to make up for that, he got to really work out his neck, uh, his chin, his just tighten up his guard and stuff like that. Just be real tough, hard. You know what I'm saying? That's his defense. Pitbull is not going to be that guy slick, fast. and nah, he's, he's that guy that's like a brick wall tank. And you're going to have to have some firepower to break through them. But I think uh, things got interesting at 140 pounds, man. Pitbull Cruz, he did his thing at 140 for his first fight. Uh, he went up there and beat the hell out of Roley. Better than anybody I've seen. Honestly, better than Tank. Um, styles really make fights at the end of the day. But uh, Pitbull Cruz handled Roley a lot better than anybody I've seen. You said Tank's scared to leave his way. Tank ain't gonna go up there fighting. I don't think Tank gonna do it. Pitbull has all got some got something to bring to the table now. We go see though. I, I wouldn't mind seeing the Pitbull Tank rematch. Honestly, I wouldn't. I think that's a fight that needs to happen again anyway. But there's so many other fights with Tank that we want to see him in. It's like shit. Do we really want to see that over these other fights? <clears throat> Pitbull is a dog, man. He's a real dog. <clears throat> What's up, Killer Man? Mars S salute. Yeah, but back to this 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 Spence Bud thing, man. Arrow Spence, man. Wow. I don't know, man. I can't find this other interview with Fundora saying he'll fight Spence, dude. So a part of him may want to fight Crawford because it really that's the right thing to do. But another part of him probably saying, Well, I should follow what my handlers in the business are gonna tell me. And that's the fight Arrow Spence, which would be the easier fight. Um, and it'll be an in-house fight for the team. I won't piss people off. You know, I won't be pissing people off if I fight Errol Spence. If I fight Crawford, I'm going to go piss a lot of people off. You know what I'm saying? If he fights Crawford, he's going to piss a lot of people off, bro. So what is Fundora to do? He put the kid in a really, um, I should say, a very peculiar situation. What does he go do now? Errol Spence hopped in the ring to challenge him. The casual audience saw that. You know, they didn't see Terrence Crawford. They saw Errol Spence. So the casual boxer fan is going to be expecting to possibly see this matchup next. But the boxer fans, the real boxer fans like us, know that Terrence Crawford should be the guy that's next in line. You said post fight interview. He said he want. Yeah, he did. We we just played it. Hold up, I'm gonna go to it again for the guys who just coming in. Y'all hit that like button for your boy. This is what Fundora said post fight. The WBO orders you to fight to fight uh, Crawford next, or you'll be stripped. Under any circumstances, will you vacate the WBO belt to fight Errol Spence? Whatever they give me, whatever they give me. Uh, Earl Spence is a great opportunity. I think it's a a a, a, a match made in heaven. But Terrence Crawford is the best fighter in the world. I would like to fight him. The WBO orders you to fight. So that's what he said. That Bud is the best fighter in the world and that he would like to fight him. Uh, let's see what according to, He says, the nerve of Arrow. What did you guys expect from this character? Classless. Got beat nearly to death, ducks the rematch, and then tries to jump in front of the guy who actually earned the opportunity. The craziest thing is, Watching his roaches cheer him on and rejoice as if. Oh, man, as if he actually beat Tim Zhu. By far the thirstiest thing you'll ever see in a sport of boxing brought to you by the usual suspects of nonsense. That's what, according to Box, I had to say about the uh, the Spence fans and their resurgence in the sport of boxing. Man, since Errol Spence made his big return in a big way. It's not, it's not in a way where traditionally, you know, Traditionally, you, Errol Spence's return will be him approaching Bud Crawford for that rematch. Him getting back what he lost. But in the new era, in the modern era, things is a lot different. Now he gets praise from not only dodging the guy that beat him for, for a rematch, but going up to fight, you know, fight a whole nother dude. 
So he gets praised for that now. Why? Because, well, the business. What's up, Falcon? I see you in the building. Oh, you said <clears throat> Fondora Trainer said differently. So what did Fondora Trainer say? Because I can't find all these clips live. It just takes too much time. What did Craig Wade, um, what did Fondora Trainer say so we can let the people know? What did he say, man? Because the trainer do be speaking differently from the fighter. Wait, you said showbiz mentioned if the Spence celebration are happy about this, they are losers to him. Oh, so he said if Spence, showbiz said if Spence fans is happy about this, they are losers. Is that what showbiz said? Mm -mm. Yeah. I mean, they shouldn't be celebrating this. Y'all hit that like button for your boy, man. Let's get these likes up, man. I need y'all to get the likes up, man. Get the likes up. Smash the like button. We have 350 people and 90 fucking five likes. Yeah. What are you guys' thoughts on this, man? Oh, you said showbiz flat out said PBC is Duck and Crawford. Wow. Okay. What's up, Damone Daniels? I see you in the building. Wow. I mean, this is the truth, though. They literally duck and butt Crawford, bro. PBC is trying to duck Bud again, man. They don't they don't like Bud like that for real, for real. They do not like dude. They mad they didn't never have them. They wish they had had them from the beginning, honestly. They wish they had Bud from the beginning. Probably Spins, too. They wish they had both of them. Then they could have built them up and had them in-house. And... But it would have been a lot of shelf sitting for Terrence Crawford if he would have been signed with PBC, bro. We may, not have, we, 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 we may not get the guy that we see today if he had been with PBC from the beginning. We may not have. Just because of the fact that a lot of those guys sit out for so long. They sit out too long. At least top rank find somebody for you to fight. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to have you just sitting out long unless you been unless you did something wrong. And they mad at you. And they'll have you sitting out like they did Nicholas Walters years ago. But Bud Crawford, if he, if he was a PBC fighter from the jump, it may or may not have played out for him the way it did, bro. Maybe this is the way it was supposed to play out for him. You said Bud is what PBC hoped Arrow would have been. I think they probably knew um, from a long time ago that he wasn't. He don't have the, the same discipline. Um, just He just don't got the same discipline. I'll just leave it at that. He just don't got the same discipline level as Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford is one of those fighters that you don't got to call and check up on to make sure he's in the gym and shit. Every time you see him, he's not on vacation. You see more pictures of him in the gym than you actually see him on vacation. Yeah, that's right, Marvin Terrell. Top rank does develop fighters better than PBC. They do. They develop fighters better. They build the fighters up better. And right now, I think still think top rank is going through their development stage with a lot of their guys. <clears throat> yeah, it sucks for Tim, man. It sucks for Tim because you could just hear it in his voice. Like I said last night, Tim Tim Zoo, by all rights, he deserves a fucking rematch, an immediate rematch. He lost by split decision, bro. He lost by split decision. He arguably won the fight. You know what I'm saying? If the cut never happened, <clears throat> I question <clears throat> if the fight still would have played out the way it did. But you can hear it in his voice after the fight that he was just like, I know I ain't going to get that rematch. It's over with. Damn. Why? Because of politics. Not because he's a horrible fighter or anything like that or, you know, none of that. It's just because of the politics. You know what I'm saying? he got Now he got to kind of go back to the drawing board and start over again. After losing one time. And he had a lot of momentum. He beat a lot of good guys in the weight class. Like I said, by all rights, Tim Zoo deserves a rematch. 
But with Errol Spence and Crawford, now things has gotten complicated for Tim Zoo. Things has gotten complicated for Tim Zoo. You said Fondura wants to smoke. Yeah, I don't see Fondura ducking. Me personally, like if this fight wasn't to happen between him and Crawford, it was some people pulling the strings for sure. It was the people pulling the strings behind the scenes, bro. I mean, that's just what it is. Is the you know, Fandora's a young guy. He's not in full control of his career just yet. It'll, it'll be the people behind the scenes pulling the strings. And the people behind the scenes that's pulling the strings is the people that's for Errol Spence Jr. And they want Errol Spence Jr. to be back in position. Why? Because he's their biggest guy. And they want to try to rebuild his career off the back of Fandora. You said Fandura would be swayed. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what's going to happen tomorrow. He's going to be persuaded to not fight him, bro. You said don't Tim have a rematch clause. I'm not sure, Felicia. I'm not I'm not sure. It don't sound like it. It didn't sound like it. He's supposed to have a rematch clause, you know, but, you know, I guess this is what happens when you had that throwback menti mentality. He probably felt that he didn't need one. Maybe he should have had one. Why? Because of not, not because of you losing a fight against a man, but you, had a, you lose against the machine. The business of boxing. So if he had a rematch clause via contract, et cetera, then they would have had to honor that. And they would have had to wait for this rematch. But since he don't, now Errol Spence hopped his ass in the ring and stole the rematch from Tim Zhu, basically. And he's attempting to steal it from Terrence Bud Crawford, but the WBO said not so fast, sir. Because now, since we saw Tim Zhu and was talking about vacating, we're going to see if Fundora is, is going to start doing the same. Talking about vacating belts and all this foolishness. Because he's going to make this fight next week. He's going to order Fundora versus Terrence Crawford next week. This is what the what board order organization is going to be doing. You said Roley lost to Javante, Spence lost to Bud, Fandura lost to Mendoza, all lost by KO, and all have championship fights their next fight. Yeah. That's kind of how PBC works. Then that happened to uh I want to say Barrios damn near got a championship fight. No, he got a big fight, pay-per-view fight with Keith, though. For pretty much selling his belt to Tank. Pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Selling his belt to Tank. Well, then his next fight, he got a big pay-per-view fight with Keith Thurman. You said, why not Crawford versus Zoo for the WBO? I mean, that's if Fundora vacates. I would imagine Zoo would be high, high, in, high in the rankings in the sanction body amongst Erickson Lubin and Josh Kelly. Um, but Crawford gets to go up there and fight for that belt regardless. And Fundora's going to be putting a, he ain't going to really enjoy being a champion. Honestly, Fandora's not even going to really get a chance to enjoy it. Because now already they're on his heels to pretty much take the belt right back away from him. And we know Terrence Crawford. I mean, oh my goodness. That's going to be that's gonna be a hell of a fight. I, I see Bud stopping Zoo, though. I mean, not Zoo, but uh, Fandora. I see Bud stopping him. Salute D. Lucky for the super chat. He says, I want, he said, I won't buy that Spence Fandora fight. Nope. Yeah, Spence, he's he's doing some dirty work, man. It's some dirty work. Salute to Jessica. I see you in the building. Yeah, that's some dirty work from Spence, man. He knows what he's doing. You said he's fighting Cyclops. Yeah, Craig Wade. He get, he's getting blackballed from trying to take control of his career. They they didn't want Bud to do that. But it wasn't supposed to do none of this stuff he's doing. But he's doing it. You know what I'm saying? He's maneuvering through boxing. He survived Bob Arum. You know what I'm saying? And now he's out here trying to do his own thing, but he's still having a hard time. Why? Because he's too fucking good, bro. 
if Crawford was like a, a, a good B-level fighter but still has some clout and juice, he'll be getting a lot more offers, a lot more bigger guys, these bigger middleweight dudes be looking to challenge him. But since he's such a fucking menace, they don't want to deal with him in no capacity, bro. <clears throat> Not even the bigger dudes. Nah, man, he's that little dude that's like, nah, I ain't messing with that dude, man. He's strong as a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? He 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 he's like chimp strong. He got long ass arms. He's smart as hell. I'm good. And he might beat me, and it's gonna look real bad if I get beat by a smaller dude. I'm good. And an older dude. Nah, I'm good. Go fight boots. <laughs> Y'all go get Boots hurt too, man. Y'all go get Boots hurt, but y'all leave Boots alone. Boots ain't saying nothing right now. Y'all go get Boots hurt, man. Why y'all want to see Boots get hurt and derailed like that? That's crazy to me. Y'all get that boy hurt, man. Give him up in there with Terrence Crawford. Boots is phenomenal, but he get up in there with Crawford, he getting his ass kicked. 100%. 100% getting his ass beat. He ain't been in there with nobody like that before, bro. He been there with too many little dudes. Been there with too many little dudes, man. Salute to everybody in the building, man. Happy Easter. We talking some boxing this early morning, man. Interesting, man. You got to love boxing. Got to love boxing, man. The Spence Crawford 3, man. The Chapter 3. I thought it was over after Chapter 2. I thought it was over, man. I thought it was. I thought we was done once and for all when Spence in his cataract surgery. But here he come, man. Spence showed how to know how to make things interesting. And it shows that he still got some um, love and respect and juice in the sport, despite that mangling that it was at the hands of Terrence Bud Crawford. Errol Spence still got a lot of love out here. So that's good, you know, that a fighter could take a bad loss and not be just written off completely. And so that's what we want. That's what we need for boxing. We don't need these boxers um to be going to these fights or be hesitant on taking these fights because they got to worry about taking the L because fans give up on them. so i'm glad errol spence's fans and i'm a fan um didn't give up on this dude because this is the i think this is a part of the problem with boxing is that fans give up on fighters so easily they take a loss it's, it's so bad in boxing when you take a loss especially depending on how you lost and etc cetera, etc cetera. it's really bad you know mma muay thai other sports you could take losses and it's nothing the fans don't like it's nothing it's almost like you didn't lose but in boxing oh man one loss is like you lost 10 times you cannot lose in boxing especially if you got it's really good a guy that they put on that pedestal you lose you get hit with a jab you can't even get hit with a jab if you're too good you got like floyd or bud shakur even Devin, somebody that's really good you can't even get hit with a jab or no shit like that bro like, the standard is crazy in boxing. We got to kind of lower the standard because these are human beings. And they go have off days in the office. They're not going to be able to perform like we expect them to perform each night out. That's just the reality of it. You know what I'm saying? So the life of a fighter is way harder. A boxer in general, not even just a fighter, a boxer is way harder, bro. Because when you lose in boxing, you lose, lose. You lose, lose. And you got to have the fans on your side. The fans got to love you. The fans got to love you in order for you to still be relevant after taking some losses. The fans got to love you. You can't be infamous like Floyd. Because after you get beat once or twice, all right, good, he's gone. He wasn't ever that good. Uh -huh. You got you to gotta fucking win this shit, bro, in boxing. It's crazy. Salute to everybody in the business. Salute to D. Luckett. Man. Salute to DL87 for the Super Chat. He says, Heyman Floyd could do whatever they want to freeze Crawford out, but Crawford's coming to 154 when that ship lands on that shore. It's bodies. Yes, right. It begins again, y'all. This, this is what I love about boxing, man. Now this is a whole new storyline at 154 pounds. Fundora found himself. And this is good for Fundora. This is good for the for the division. This is good for guys like Fondora to get his name in the mix with guys like Crawford. So now more people gonna know who he is. Um, this is this is this is good for like you know that for for guys like Fondora and Tim Zoo and the guys at 154 who, in my opinion, been one of the more competitive weight classes, but didn't have any real big names there to really get the division moving.
Yeah, man. Unfortunately, in boxing, uh, if the stars ain't aligning for you, it could derail your whole damn career, bro. So when I say, is it over for Roley? Um, I think at the elite level. At the elite level, I think Rolando Romero is going to struggle. This is going off basically what I was saying about fighters taking losses and stuff. I think Roley's, I think his time at the, as an elite fighter, he needs a lot of work. He might have to take some time off, go train, 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 and then come back. You know what I'm saying? Take some, take a couple of years off and just train the whole time and come back stronger and better than ever. So he's a young guy. I don't want to say it's over for Orlando Romero. He could take some time off and come back. But don't come back too soon. Don't come back fighting the wrong opponent. And stay away from any of these elite guys. Because Orlando Romero has just shown us that he's just not really – he's not really an A-level little guy. You know what I'm saying? He's like a C-plus type guy almost. You said Fundora did not say that. Salute D. Lucky for the super chat. He says, "Do you think Amazon will have a say on quality fights being made? They, they do hold up to high standards, right?" That's a good question. Um, ooh, I don't know. I guess that depends on what they view as the higher higher quality fight. Was a would a fight between Spence and Fundora be a, considered more of a quality, or uh, um, Crawford and Fundora? Because will it be harder? They got to look at it. Let's look at it like from a from a business standpoint. You are Amazon exec, dude. You running this boxing shit now, right? And what would be a better fight to you? Um, an undefeated pound for pound king who beat the arguably the one of the best fighters pound for pound, Errol Spence Jr., to move up to face the Sebastian Fedora, or the guy that got his ass kicked by the best fighter in the world to go up and fight. Come on, man. It's a no brainer, bro. It's a no brainer. But PBC don't care about none of that. PBC go want to do what they want to do. And they go paint a narrative the way they want to paint it. But we know the truth. We know what's really supposed to happen. And this is why the WBO is in the mix. Because this is really supposed to what's happened. The super champion is able to go up to face the champion in the higher weight class. And WBO, um, Terrence Crawford is one of WBO's most respected, celebrated champions since that belt organization started. I, I would imagine. They, they love Bud Crawford. So, yeah, they're going to make it happen, bro. Just like how the WBC be making shit happen for Canelo, well, WBO going to make shit happen for Bud. And now Sebastian Fandora is going to be held to the fire. See if he going to really take that challenge. I think he will. I like Fandora. He's a, he seems like a – but honestly, if it don't happen, I know who did. I know who did it, and it wasn't Fandora. It's, it's the, the people that's controlling this young guy's career. They really got to him and persuaded him not to do it. They probably told him, look, we'll give you this amount of money if you take the Spence fight instead of Crawford. We'll add extra $5 million if you don't fight Crawford. Life changes the money for you and your sister. Hell, we'll make sure your sister gets paid more of her fights. You know that'll work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is boxing, man. This is like the Wild West. Yeah, they say something about Fundora's sister. Like, yeah, we go, we make sure your sister next person, her next fight is in the upper six figures, almost millions. He'll definitely do it then. Why? Because that's his little sister. And they seem to be real close. And she's a champion too. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to, to persuade Fundora, a young guy like him, not to take the fight with Crawford, a fight that he should be taking. But also a fight with Crawford could, could spell almost inevitable doom unlike spence where he may may or may not lose but with crawford i almost certain that he'll he's going to lose that fight crawford just way too smart and even while fandora poses some complications some some problems for most guys that's going to be dealing with him i think a guy like crawford be able to figure that out so easily why because fandora really was doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again and that's one thing against Crawford you can't do. You're going to have to constantly adapt to what this dude is doing. 
he's going to be able to figure you out. And then once he figures you out, what are you going to do to stop him? Once he gets your range down, your speed, what you doing in there? After the first two or three rounds, it's pretty much over with. He takes off, he's gone. But with a guy like Spence, who's a lot more straightforward, right? What he say he go do? What did Spence say he go do? He go walk him down. Very much more straightforward approach. Is Spence punching hard enough to really? It's a lot of questions, man. We go see. Spence look a lot bigger and stronger right now. He may be stronger at 154 pounds. He may have some more power on his punches. He may have some more power in his legs at 154 pounds. But it's yet to be seen. Because he took a hell, of a, a hell of a beating from Bud. And by all boxing rights, he needs to be working his way back up. You lost, sir. Salute to Reggie Singleton for the Super Chat. He says, why nobody say anything about Jamel Charlo? Don't he have the WBC belt? Ain't he one of the top dogs? I think he got stripped, bro. I think he got stripped. I don't know. what, Bro, Jamel just, man, I, I told y'all, man. Didn't I tell y'all, bro? I know what I be talking about, man. Even if it don't be sounding right. Jamel should not have, man, if he if he was to take that Canelo fight, he really, 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 really should have made the best of it, bro. Because now look at him. Jamel Charlo went from one of the most talked about dudes in the sport to just, where is he at now? Just dropped off the face of the earth completely. Dropped off, just where? Where is he at? What big fights are out there for him now? They took all his belts and everything for him taking it. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? I man, look, I, I hate talking about Jamel because I know Jamel could have did better than that. I know Jamel could have fought better than that, bro. I don't care about that power shit, bro. That shit's crazy to me. Canelo is not cracking like a better beef. He's not cracking like a tank. He's not even cracking like a Crawford. He's not. Jamel Charlo went up in there and just laid down for Canelo, bro. I, I don't know how much how many times I could stress it. I, I strongly believe that Jamel Charlo did not give it his all. At the very least, he didn't give it his all in that fight. He didn't. He wasn't willing to go out on his shield. None of that shit. He sat there and he made Canelo look really good. And that was all part of the plan. He was Canelo's biggest fan going into the fucking fight, bro. This is why I said the Minguia fight is going to end the same way. He's too, he's, he's too much of a fan of this dude. Jamel Charlo could have made that fight so much easier than it needed to be. Tony Harrison is a tougher matchup than Canelo, bro. Stylistically, come on, man. Canelo ain't got no fast feet. He barely throwing jabs. He does the same thing over and over again. He has stamina issues. He likes to fight in spots. It's so much shit. That even though Jamel Charlo isn't a fleet-footed, crafty guy, he has some intangibles about him that he could have made that fight a lot easier than what it was. He was too worried about his power. So what? He hitting hard. What you going to do about it? Just run around? Hit that motherfucker back. Hit him back. Stop letting him walk you down. He ain't that much big, man. Don't even get me started on Jamel, bro. Because I'm still, I'm mad at that dude about that fight, bro. I really, because now he probably, like, now where you at, dog? You knew you can't even look at yourself in the mirror and say you gave it your all in that fight. You just took the money, bro. You sold out. He sold out. This is where Jamel Charlo was at. He sold out. It's crazy. Yeah, man, I was down to see Jamel after the, but he ain't got no belts now or nothing. He's just, he lost all relevance in the weight class in an instant. He went from being the top guy at 154, undisputed, the man. Then overnight, bro, he took that Canelo fight. He sold out for the money, and now he lost it all, it seemed like. Yeah, he got the money. Yeah, he going to be living good. But at what cost? We heard about his personal problems. At what cost? We ain't heard nothing from dudes since. Yeah, man, all that mitt work, all that stuff. Like, come on, man. And I'm not saying this to, like, try to piss the Canelo fans off. I was a Canelo fan. I be having on my intros and shit for a reason, bro. But nah, man, you can't convince me that this dude is in here 
and, and not and, 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 and isn't partaking in these bullshit ass fights, dude. I, I know what a real fight looks like, bro. I know what a real fight looks like. I know what a sparring match looks like. I know what a fucking fixed fight looks like. That's just, I'm just leaving it at that. Yeah, man, Mel was on his way to build himself to be in the Hall of Fame at the very least, bro, and he just threw it all away. He threw it all away, man. Crazy, man. I'm mad at Jamel, man. I'm mad at dude, bro. He could have really, I'm, I'm still mad about that because I know he didn't give it his all. And now he's probably really kicking himself in the ass that he knows deep down he didn't. And now he lost all relevance, and now he's not even in the mix at all at 154. It's Errol Spence, Fedora, Zoo, Crawford. A whole different lineup of fighters now. A whole new lineup of guys now. Not even in, And Charlo's not included nowhere in this equation. A lot of people seem to believe Crawford earned the first crack at Tim Zoo. I mean, I'm sorry, Fedora. And I would agree. I would agree. We go see what how this plays out, man. We go see if the politics really, really take over, or the boxing universe and what's supposed to be right by the sport actually happens. You say, how come Charlo couldn't get the same treatment as Canelo when, uh, bro? Ain't it? Right? Charlo didn't get the same treatment when he lost his belt. He lost everything from that loss. When Canelo lost against Bevo, he cut all his glory. He kept his reputation. He kept his glory. But Charlo, it, 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 it wasn't the same for him. He lost literally everything. Everything. Hey, you ain't lying, DL87. Never seen a guy with a big smile losing it. Man, I'm, come on, man. Biggest fight of your life, you smiling? You smiling? This is the biggest fight of your life. It would have been remembered amongst the history books that Jamel Charlo went in there and beat Canelo Alvarez. But now you went in and you just another name on his resume, bro. Threw it all away. Salute to Drico Bay, man. He says, Ugas took orders versus EJ, Kovalev, and Charlo took orders. I'm telling you, bro. We, we know what we be watching, bro. Come on, man. Well, I forgot about the Ugas fight now. Well, since we talking dives and questionable moments in boxing, Ugas let up off the gas on Errol Spence, bro. Yeah, y'all remember that? Ugas was on his bumper. Then he let up off the gas a little bit. Then let EJ take over. He's like, oops, I wasn't supposed to do that. I thought he could take that kind of punch. My bad, that was a reaction. Had Errol Spence reeling, remember that? Had him reeling on the ropes. That was Crawford had him reeling, and he would have been out of the ring. But Ugas was like, oops, my bad. Come on, man, suspect moment. And then what else we got? Um, The Kovalev fight, right? Yeah, we talk about the dives and shit and the funny-looking fights in boxing over here on Bushido Box. The Kovalev fight, y'all heard me talk about that many times. Kovalev wasn't the crusher that night. Where was the crusher? Pity Patton. Fighting like Dimitri Bivol almost. Where was this crushing power at? Nah, he wasn't trying to fuck the money up, bro. Yeah, that's what it was. He wasn't trying to mess the money up, man. He was up in there pity patting with Canelo. Jacobs got up in there with Canelo, pity padding. You know what I'm saying? Just pity padding, not trying to win a fight, not throwing punches for real. Letting Canelo dictate the pace of the fight. Letting Canelo control the fight when we know Canelo can't fight a full duration of a fight. He can't. He got to take breaks. Yeah, Ugas was gun shy. Ugas was gun shy after he punched Spence in the mouth too hard. And when Spence was looking around for his mouthpiece in the ring. Salute to Junior for the super chat. He says, people acting like PBC is in control of all four belts at 54. Crawford, the WBO, vacated WBA, Murderov, and IBF Murderov champions at the PBC, guys. So two guys 
Martorev and I can't even pronounce these dudes' names. Um, they the champions. They took Jamel's belts. That's just crazy to say, even. You know, Jamel lost all them belts for no reason. Um, <laughs> I don't know, bro. I don't know who those dudes is. You know what I'm saying? Um, do they want smoke? I don't know. WB, I don't know. Who, who, this, this is why I don't like, like, who are those dudes to, like, who they fought to be even next in line to be a, 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 a like, who? And it's always some, like, foreign dudes you never fucking heard of before, bro. That's really high rate. Like, who are these guys, bro? I don't know who those dudes really are, bro. I don't. Maybe if I've seen them, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm familiar with this dude, but. Uga's fight looked at bogus as hell, Art, man. I ain't trying to hear it. I, I like the big fish now. I like the big fish, bro. But nah, man, Uga's let up off the gas on you. Because prior to that fight, the Uga's that fought Pacquiao, he fought like a dude that has something to lose. Uga's fought like it was his last fight with a torn bicep and everything. He fought like an animal against Pacquiao throughout the whole fight. Great fight. Great performance from Ugas. The last great performance we've seen from him. Then he gets in there with Spence. Doing a lot better than people expected. Hit him a little too hard. And then ever since that round, Ugas' career went downhill since. And he even lost to Mario Barrios. It's crazy, man. You said even a Mikey fight looked fake. I don't necessarily think that was fake. I think that was just a situation to where he just couldn't do nothing with Arrow. Just couldn't do nothing with him. You know what I'm saying? I think I don't think that was a, a, a setup fight. I think that was a legit fight. Arrow was just too big, too much for dude. You know what I'm saying? But the Ugas fight, I question that shit. Like, wait a minute, bro. Why you stop punching all of a sudden? Why, why? What happened? You had the momentum in the fight. Why you give it up? You had a rare unicorn moment and you just let it go. You had the lasso round and then you let it go, bro. Come on. Hey, you say you best spits. I won't hold up what I. His eye seems to be just fine. If he's getting in there with a guy like Fondora who be peppering you and he could you with an elbow, nothing wrong with his eye for real. He said he got that walkie-talkie call when he hit Arrow. <laughs> and he had that little earpiece in his ear. Ugas, what the hell are you doing? It was in Spanish, though. Told him, what are you doing? Who said Fundora beats Bud? I don't know, man. I doubt it. I doubt it. I think, I think, nah, Fundora can't beat Bud, man. Despite his size difference and stuff, Bud just got way too many skills. And Fedora still got a. He, like I said, I question if that cut happened. Where he still had had the that edge. Ooh, excuse me, that edge in that fight like that. You say he fought a fifty-year-old Pacquiao, but the way he fought, bro, is what I'm saying. The intensity I saw from Ugas was just he 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 was coming to win like it was his last fight, bro. Okay, okay, so where was that energy for Spence throughout the whole duration of the fight? That's what I'm saying. He's a he's a Metal Gear Solid nanotech earpiece. I'm telling you, you can't even see it. Can't even see it, bro. Metal Gear Solid just talking to everybody. You can't even see the thing in his ear. Yeah, he's talking to everybody in the ring. Speaking of fixes, real quick, I heard in basketball, but basketball player, I think he's uh, what's his name, Jante Porter, or Jante Portis. He was betting on himself to go under for these games or some shit like that, betting on himself, and he got caught up doing it. So yeah, man, um, be careful out here betting and shit. This shit be rigged out here, bro. Basketball players, athletes, they'll bet on themselves or how their family members doing it for them, and they'll bet on themselves to go under, and they'll go under. 
what I'm saying? You better them go over. You expect them to go over. They'll go under on purpose just because this is what the what the play is. I heard about that. So, yeah, it'd be a lot of fixed shit going on, man. You said Fundora throws too many punches. I give him a chance to beat Crawford, but not Spence. Really? That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, you got to be careful, Gracie. A lot of shit seems rigged out here, man. You said, does he beat a prime Mayweather Crawford? Um, What prime Mayweather are we talking about? Are we talking about Pretty Boy Floyd prime or Money Mayweather prime? 36-year-old Mayweather versus 36-year-old Crawford. Who wins? I think that would be both guys' toughest matchup. But I think it'll be even tougher for Floyd than it would be for Bud. And that's just for the obvious reasons. I think it'll be tougher for Floyd than it would be for Bud. Because for, 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 for Floyd to be up in there with a guy that can arguably match his IQ, right? Crawford could arguably match Floyd's IQ. He may not can match Floyd's cat-like reflexes. But he can match his IQ. He has the reach advantage actually over Floyd, which Floyd had a lot of, uh, like Crawford, Floyd was a shorter guy with a long reach over a lot of his opponents. Um, but the difference is the killer instinct. Crawford goes in there to hurt his opponents. Floyd goes in there and just really tries to outclass dudes and put up a really um, clean defensive boxing clinic. They they two, two really opposite, but really just high caliber fighters. But I think that, Crawford would be a harder fight for Floyd. Why? Because Crawford, he he could hurt you. He could actually hurt you. He's hurting you with both hands. He could stop you in a variety of different ways. He got a variety of different punches he's throwing. Um, and then he has the IQ to back it up. He has the ability to adapt. He has the ability to, to adapt. Hey, hold on real quick, you guys. I need y'all to get the likes up, man. Get the likes up. Smash the like button. We have 350 people and 90 fucking five likes. All right, my bad, you guys. Oh, kids just came back. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know. That's a good question, though, man. I like the matchup, the hypothetical matchup between Floyd. Um, oh, I'm sorry, my mic was on mute. Um, I like the hypothetical matchup between Floyd and um, but Crawford, man. So, even though Floyd be pissing me off, he's still one of my favorite fighters and shit. Even though I can criticize, he be pissing me off and shit. He be doing some shit, but uh. That's that's one of those matchups where you can kind of flip a coin. Could Floyd outthink Crawford is the question. Will he be able to outthink Crawford, and could Crawford keep up with Floyd? They're both two fighters with a crazy adaptability. Uh, they seem to be able to change gears on guys. I think Crawford has, has the gears, though, to really, 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 really just turn up on dudes, and they can't just keep up. It's almost like he turns Super Saiyan, and they just can't keep up. Do Floyd with a, with a prime Floyd, money Mayweather Floyd, does he have that that type of turn up? You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. I love I love that. I could talk about that shit all day. The um, Crawford Floyd fight. I, I I just say this. I think it will be tougher for Floyd than it will be for Bud. Um, if you made me pick, I'll I'll lean towards Crawford just because he has the killer edge. You know, he has the killer edge. But I'm not gonna say Bud goes in there. And just stops and watches Floyd either. You know what I'm saying? Because it's Floyd Mayweather. He's one of the smartest fighters you ever see. So that's a good fight, though, man. That's a really good just fantasy fight.
between two 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 of the best fighters you probably ever see. But yeah, you guys, I don't know, man. Um, you said Mayweather beats Bud easy. Easy? Are we sure about that? I don't know, bro. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say easy. Did Floyd beat Cotto easy? I don't think so. I think that's one of my favorite Floyd fights, too, because I seen Floyd bleed and I seen him show some dog. I love that fight. That's one of my favorite Mayweather fights. He was sick or whatever, but he showed heart and dog. You know what I'm saying? In that fight. Man, I don't know, man. Floyd is hard to hit, but Floyd, come on, man. Let's call let's let's call a spade a spade. He didn't fight too many dudes that was able to hit him. At a certain point, Floyd was able to really dictate who he fought. And he chose to fight dudes that was going to have a hard time hitting him. Crawford. Would Crawford have a hard time hitting Floyd? Crawford has the reach, unlike any a lot of the opponents that Floyd fought, bro. Vice versa. Crawford could switch to Southpaw. The Philly shell is utterly useless against Southpaws. You know what I'm saying? So there's a Crawford might a, a, a fighter like Crawford could be kryptonite for Floyd Mayweather, bro. He could he could literally be kryptonite for Floyd Mayweather, his style. Why? Because he could switch both sides, he could punch with both hands. He's a he's a wide variety of different punches he's throwing. He's not Bud Crawford. You don't know what Bud go do. You kind of knew what Floyd was gonna do. It just a matter of could you stop him from doing it. But with Crawford, you don't know what this dude go do, bro. That's a tough fight for Floyd, man. I don't care what nobody say. We can box about that. We can box over that. That's a tough fight for Floyd. I'm not saying who will win, but I think it's a tougher matchup for Floyd than it is for Crawford. I'll just leave it at that. You said TC KOs Floyd. He said Bud is country strong. He is. That's another thing. Country strong. He's strong. Strong, strong, strong. Spence couldn't even move, but we saw it. Spence couldn't even move him. He couldn't move, but but pushed him right off. Easy work. This same Spence was probably bullying Floyd in the ring, but they say that Floyd actually got the better of Spence in that sparring session. But that's not what the narrative we heard at that time. You said Diego Carlos was good when he beat another slick guy around his age. That was a really good win for Floyd. Oh, my God. That Floyd that night. Now, if we put the Floyd money, um, pretty boy Floyd, um, lightweight Floyd against lightweight Bud, I don't know about that. I think pretty boy might get him. Pretty boy Floyd was a, man, he was a monster, bro. Just absolute mind. I don't know. That's Crawford and Mayweather is a great matchup just all around. Pick which 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 time frame you want. Is 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 probably one of the best matchups you could probably think of. You said Crawford could do everything Mayweather can. I think so too. Crawford has big hands, right? Big hands. Uh, Floyd had really little hands, little small hands. The Crawford is probably one of those dudes that, that, that you know got some heavy hands on him. I don't know, man. That's that's I could talk about that fight all day, and I don't. I you know we just this this wasn't. Yeah, you said lightweight Floyd. Oh shit, man. Nobody's beating that dude. Lightweight Floyd, <laughs> featherweight Floyd. When he was man, come on, man. Pretty boy Floyd, man. That's probably one of the best fighters you ever see. Period. Because he was he was a he was a total package at that time. He was well balanced between defense and offense. He was letting his hands go, putting them combinations together, trying to hurt people. But as he got older, he changed his style up, and that's typically how it goes. The greats tend to change it up. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, you got to change it up as you get older. So he became less offensive, became more defensive. But with Crawford, he didn't change. He went. To, he did the opposite. As he got older, moving up in weight, he got more offensive and started getting more stoppages. So, man, I don't know, man. They both great. They both great. Oh, I'm glad you said something about Laura. I, I'm glad you said something about Laura, man. Laura's one of my favorite fighters. And he's still out here kicking fucking ass, bro. 
I forgot to mention my boy Laura. Hold up. Laura's what, 42 now? And for years, Laura was labeled boring. And he's been knocking dudes out. He turned 40 years old and he started knocking everybody out. Yeah, I'm a big Laura fan. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. Boom. Boom. I mean, come on, bro. Y'all was hating on my boy for years. Look at him. Smack. Bro, come on, bro. And that was an old fight, right? That was one of his old fights. I got to talk about my boy Laura, man. That's one of my favorite fighters. Where's his recent fight at? Is it this one? No, nah, it's not. Where's his recent fight at? I want to see the clip. Because he knocked old boy out nasty style. Um, Look at this. The Cuban boxing team with Gamboa right here. Um, Laura right there. Um, let's see who else looks familiar. They go um, Luis uh, Ortiz. You know what I'm saying? The Cuban team. Your Dennis Ugas right here. Rigandal, I think Rigandal was captain. Yeah. Hold up. I'm trying to find Laura knocking old boy out, man. Because that was a nasty knockout. Laura's knocking people out. He going to have a hard time getting fight still because Laura still got some gas in the tank. Hold up. Let me, let me find it. Straight left. Laura's straight left is lethal. Yeah, there we go. Hell yeah, my boy Laura, man. Knock dude out. They didn't show the whole clip, but he hit him with a straight left and put him out in second round. So Laura is not over for Edis Landy Laura, man. Salute to Laura, man. I forgot to mention him yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Y'all smash that like button for your boy. You said Floyd Mayweather's Magic Johnson, Terrence Crawford's Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah, Gamboa was a gold medalist. You, you said, do I think Danny could beat Laura? Nah, nah, I don't think Danny could beat Laura, bro. I think Laura beats Danny. I think Laura beats Danny, bro. Laura still got a lot left in the tank, and now he's punching even harder than before. And then he had all the experience and IQ of the Cuban boxing. You know, them Cuban boxers are really, really smart. Um, Laura's still here, bro. He's still out here doing his thing. So salute to S. Lanny Laura. You know what I'm saying? The, um, the American dream. You know what I'm saying? He out here knocking people out. You know, nobody's calling out Laura to take his belt from him. You know, he's not easy picking still. And this is for good reason. Laura's been one of the more um, avoided fighters over the years, if you ask me. Yeah, he walked off real smooth, Jessica. He walked off real smooth after that knockout. What's up, Shanti? The OG Shanti in the building, man. Salute. You said Laura versus Bud next? Ah, uh, why you gonna do that to me, man? Why you gonna do that to me, man? That's a, that's a horrible fight for me. You said Laura versus Adamas. Yeah, that's a good fight. I think Laura could beat him. Danny Laura just never happened, man. For whatever reason, Danny Laura just never happened. Laura, well, we see why Laura's still out here. He can still kick ass. Even at 40 years old, he's not somebody you can just hop on and take a belt from him. You got to really be prepared for this dude. He's punching harder than ever. Um, that straight left is now lethal. You know, that straight left hand is lethal. People still talk about the Gamboa. Um, the Gamboa situation, like Gamboa was just some chump, bro. Like Gamboa was not just some chump. You know what I'm saying? Like Gamboa was, was a gold medalist. He's one of the best boxers. Like people forget that Gamboa was the dude. You know what I'm saying? Like Gamboa was that dude. This, this is why boxer fans is disrespectful. Yeah, he may be a gatekeeper now and, you know, but, nah, man, Gamboa, he was a gold medalist, and at the time, he was a, the toughest test on Terrence Crawford's career. The most approved established opponent of his career at that time. And gave Crawford his toughest fight at that time. But now, you know, you fast forward to almost 10 years later, Gamboa was never nothing. 
That's terrible. Gamboa became a really good gatekeeper, and he makes a lot of money being a gatekeeper. He got Rolls Royces and everything. Gamboa is well off. He's a good. He's a good test for a lot of these guys. You can make a lot of money in boxing being a gatekeeper. A real strong gatekeeper. You can make some good money in boxing being a gatekeeper for the upcoming guys to test them and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of these dudes wasn't watching boxing, GK. They just heard narratives from other YouTubers, and they kind of go off of that. You said Fondora's team is pushing for the arrow fight. Oh, I believe it, Damone. I believe it. I believe they push for the arrow. It's the easier fight, bro. And, 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 it, and it'll go against the business of boxing. You said, who did Gamboa ever beat? I don't know, man. Who did he beat? Um, well, shit, I know he got avoided by guys like Mikey Garcia. Um, I guess it really don't matter at this point who he beat. He fought some of everybody. The only guy that really stopped him was Terrence Crawford. Yeah, remember, Cuban fighters always had a hard time getting fights. Rigondeaux, Luis Ortiz. Um, unless you're a guy like Ugas, you, you're a Cuban fighter, you're going to have a really, really hard time getting a fight, bro. Now, Danny Garcia, he don't have the fire to fight like that no more, man. He could have been fought Laura and got that belt. And, but Danny don't got that fire no more, man. Danny got a lot of money anyway. He got a lot of shit going on outside the box. And Danny's not hungry. You said Mikey would have stopped him? Nah. Mikey, Mikey wanted no smoke with Gamboa, bro. Ooh, good question, Jason Williams. Was anybody impressed with Fundora last night? That's a good question. Um, not necessarily impressed. I, I only thing I was impressed about was that he was able to stay true to his game plan. He didn't deter to the machismo or balls to the wall brawling style. Um, and he stuck to the game plan the whole fight. So that's what I was impressed with from Fandora. He's learning and getting smarter as a fighter. And that look, I can't just say he, he still took a lot of damage, as you can see. But um, he fought a really good game plan and he stuck to it. And it's easy to get thrown off your game plan once you start getting hit and the fighting and the stuff you're trying to do ain't working. It's easy to deter back to who you are as a fighter. So. Fandora pretty much did what he was supposed to do, man. He got the job done. Uh, he fought a smart fight. He didn't let Tim Zhu gain any momentum in the fight. He did eat every shot. Tim um, Fandora got a good chin on him, man. He takes. A, he still takes a lot of damage, though. He takes a lot of damage, man. For a guy that big, he shouldn't be getting hit as much. But he be getting hit quite a bit. Yo, hit that like button for your boy, man. Errol Spence, um, you lost, sir. And like I said yesterday, would Errol Spence still be eager to get in the ring and do all this stuff if Keith Thurman was still part of this situation? This was the perfect storm for Errol Spence to really make his return. Perfect, perfect, perfect storm. You said Pitbull just beat the Rocky Fielding of his division. Pretty much. Pretty much. You said cheat code, uppercut, Fondora was my guy. He would have smothered Tim Zoo's punches. Hey, you ain't lying, um, Sean T. He needs to study Tommy Hearns and Larry Holmes. That's all he needs to do. He's a southpaw, six foot six, longer reach than everybody. And he can make any fight hard for anybody, bro. He can make any fight hard. Even if he's the lesser skilled, experienced guy, he can still make any fight really, really hard. Harder than it should be. I mean, harder than he um it can, he can make his fights easier than any um easier than it should be. He said Gamboa was dropping engines like meteors. He was. People forgot Gamboa, and they, 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 they didn't really get the you know, the buzz back then was different from what it is now. 
before Gamboa, you know, ran into Crawford. Gamboa was one of those dudes. Now, he ain't going to be able to move like Hearn, but he could take some things away. They got the same build. Um, and he could just really just learn a flicker jab, you know, learn different variations of a jab. Um, only thing I can say about Fondora is that he needs to increase his punch variety. He did a lot of the same thing over and over again. It was working for him, but I think against a guy like Crawford, he going to have to really, really switch it up, throw some different punches. Yeah, he needs to snap. Exactly. Throw some snapping jabs, flicking jabs. He he has to throw some different jabs instead of just that little pawing jab he kept doing. He needs to start flicking that jab out. Oh, you say you got Bam Rodriguez over Estrada, Carlos Estrada. That should be a great fight. I think Bam is going to win. Bam Rodriguez is a bad dude. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He pushes his punches like, like that, that, that. He ain't snapping them. He needs to learn how to snap his jab. And that's what I said. Fondora is still a work in progress, man. He's still a work in progress. But I don't know, man. Who go get the fight first? Will it be Arrow or will it be Bud? <sighs> WBO said that they're going to enforce this fight next week. What Bud ordered, right? Paco Vassella, um, Varcasel. Say he's going to enforce the fight next week. Um, so we're going to see what happens. You know, this is going to be a battle of now to Spence Crawford. Crawford Spence, chapter three begins. Now they're going to be fighting for position at 154 pounds. Um, the in-house fighter, Errol Spence, it seemed like he's going to segue right into this fight with Fondora. Uh, but by all rights, it should be Terrence Crawford next. Why? Because, well, he was the winner. In the previous fight with Errol Spence, he's the undisputed champion. He's the guard is the best fight in the sport. He's pound for pound number one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, man, um, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Terrence Buck Crawford said, you lost, sir. You got to get back in the line. Errol Spence says, I don't know. I don't do lines. So, yeah, man, salute to everybody. Happy Easter. Salute to everybody in the chat. Um, salute to everybody that donated to the dojo today. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your Easter. Catch you guys on the next one. Like, subscribe, how it's your boy. Peace out.